Hi, welcome to the Online Seed Stars World Competition, the regional finals of the MENA region. My name is Mira Shirkawi and I'm Seed Stars Community and Events Manager. We're about to discover awesome startups from the region. Stay with us to listen to the startup pitches, learn the most recent ecosystem insights, and find out who will represent the MENA region at the global stage and compete for the $500,000 in equity investment. So, cross-border e-commerce, that's what you're going to talk about. Moem is the first interactive platform uh, specialized in booking. And when we talk about the silent killer, we talk about diabetes. Um, and of the remaining 10%, most treatment options are vastly expensive and inefficient. This episode wouldn't be possible without the support of our great partners. Madab, Presence Switzerland, and VOD. Innovation takes time. It's challenging. Frustrating. But often, a thing of beauty. We understand it takes ideas, dedication, vision. Above all, it takes people, entrepreneurs who love to innovate. Startups that love to make change. And companies who are not scared of taking risks or wonder what could be. Fostering innovation requires the right environment to flourish. VA is one of Europe's leading innovation hubs with a vast number of growing industries. It's where Swiss quality of life, stability, diversity of skilled labor, talent and academic research are all linked together to grow ideas and innovate. Our ecosystem is rich with diversity, setting up endless possibilities between many different sectors. Health tech and life sciences, food tech and nutrition, digital trust and cybersecurity, aerospace and precision engineering, AI and machine learning, sport tech, drones and robotics, energy and environment technology, all converging to harness each other's high-tech strengths. We act as a bridge between startups, corporates, investors, and entrepreneurs. We understand innovation takes connections, support, and financial incentives. That it takes collaboration, talent, and the most advanced technologies to push ideas forward and bring them to market. That's why we promote, invest, connect, and grow innovation. Vo. Now I want to welcome to stage Francesca Bombessi, SeedStars Regional Partnership Manager, who will share with you some ecosystem insights about the region and the SeedStars World Competition. Hi everyone, this is Francesca and I oversee the MENA region at SeedStars. Today, I'm super happy to be here with you and share with you the ecosystem insight we've got after the Seed Stars World Edition in the MENA region in 2020-2021.
Essentially, this year has been super exciting, but heavily impacted by COVID. Yet, we're still here and thriving, which is super good news. Um, by turning this competition online, essentially, we managed to achieve quite a bit um, of milestones. Essentially, we were able to become stronger than ever and much more inclusive than we were before. What do I mean by this? Essentially, we operated three shifts. We sourced the startups virtually, which means that entrepreneurs from all over the countries, so not only capital cities, but also second tier cities and more rural areas could apply to the competition. Second of all, we provided a better and more inclusive access to training through our, um, through our online Seed Stars Academy and the Investment Readiness Program, which both took place online. And third, we were able to do a better matching of mentors and investors with entrepreneurs due to the fact that we didn't have essentially to fly anybody in. So these are three really good news that enabled us to be much more inclusive. Right now, we are at the regional finals where we'll have the top 20 startups selected out of 94 local winners um, compete for the, ch uh, the challenge of becoming the global winner and win up to 500k US dollars. So welcome, everybody. To give you some more detail, in the MENA, we are working with startups from 19 ecosystems, um, which is also an increase compared to 15 in 2019-2020. Going online has thus had several benefits, as you can tell. Our biggest increase in terms of entrepreneurial inclusiveness lies in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Syria, where we were able to um, penetrate the markets for Syria and uh, for Syria this year. And expanded the reach of our activities in Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. So we are very, very pleased with those increases. So what about the entrepreneurs that you're going to see today? I'm going to give you some data about their performance, challenges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So COVID definitely provided opportunities, and 30% of the entrepreneurs we worked with clearly stayed so, which is rather good news, right? One third. Um, with a clear increase in opportunities that lie specifically in the sectors closer to the heart um, of the COVID-triggered reshuffling in, um, in, in the product and service industry, essentially. Um, so, so we for sure see a big increase in the health and education sectors. I mean, of course, um, those were the ones where innovation was the most needed um, as a fast reply to the COVID crisis this year. It's very clear that MENA entrepreneurs have suffered of the wave, have, oops, sorry, have surfed on the wave um, and jumped at the opportunities that were offered to them. Looking at Seedstar's world in the MENA region in particular, um, and, and zooming in on the applications from 2020 and 2021, um, we see that the most trending industries are definitely health and education, as I previously stated, but also advertising and marketing, as well as retail. Through those sectors and other sectors, we see that the entrepreneurs are, are doing a great job at trying to have a positive impact um, that tackles um, various SDGs. And if we look at those SDGs that are being tackled by the entrepreneur a bit closer, if we zoom in, we really see that the, the SDGs that are the most tackled are the SDG 4, 5, 8, and 17. So qualitative education, gender equality, decent work and economic growth, as well as partnerships to achieve the sustainable development goals. We also noticed that, um, that the entrepreneurs we worked with this year um, really are opting for business models that remain low risk. Um, why so? Well, essentially because this year is is not the year um, you want to take a lot of risk considering you want to keep the head above the water, considering the tricky situation um, with the pandemic and various um, economic um, instabilities across the region. So in fact, we see that B2B and B2B2C models account for approximately 60% um, of the startups um, that applied this year. Essentially, such business models, so B2B and B2B2C, are less risky considering they are less trend-based and they are um, businesses that tend to be more, um, I mean, the, the clients are businesses and so they tend to be more rational than consumers. 
so so these are really the two the two main reasons why um why we see that uh 60% of the startups opted for those low risk business models it's also cl quite clear that recurring revenues are a top priority for entrepreneurs recurring revenue models take the lead on revenue model side accounting for 46% and unsurprisingly so considering recurring models are a safer way for entrepreneurs to monetize. They are also easier to predict revenues and grow every month because they don't need to repeat the sales cycle all over again. Um, and so they could build on the efforts of previous months. In other words, customers have to keep paying to continue experiencing the value of the product um, or service versus an on-demand business model, revenue model. Um, and so with 46% um, entrepreneurs opting for a recurring revenue model, we also see that there are um, other ways to generate revenue with subscription-based models um, standing at 31% product and subscription-based models at 15% and then freemium licensing, advertising and on-demand models are really um, on the lower end with a, with a super low traction in the pool of applicants this year. That being said, we want to share with you some of the key challenges we observed. Um, so we see that 28% of the startups in the batch did not reach um, product market fit this year or did not know how to confirm they have reached it. So, so again, nearly, I mean, yeah, one quarter, um, a bit more than a quarter of the batch. And 82% of the startups did not know their unit economics or were unsure of how to calculate those. So these are, these are, um, these are, the two key challenges we've identified in the pool of applicants this year. So what did we do? Well, essentially, we tried filling the gap with online content. Um, 250 startups from the region, so North Africa and Middle East, got access to the online Seedstars Academy, where they learned more about customers, product and competitors, market pricing, unit economics, and fundraising. At the regional stage, we enrolled um, the local winner to the investment readiness program, also online, that included live sessions of webinars, office hours from an entrepreneur in residence, and domain group sessions. We were essentially addressing the startup's challenges identified through their applications um, and tackling specific needs, especially con uh, concerning unit economics, the r funnel, North Star metric, key priority indicators, and growth levers to scale faster. And of course, we also facilitated, men, uh, facilitated sorry, mentor meetings. 156 meetings were organized for entrepreneurs from the region. The top category, um, the, I mean, the majority of them requested uh, mentorship with regards to growth, followed by finance and strategy. And overall, we're very happy because the, the average rating of the mentorship session, um, which is one way to calculate how useful they were, uh, lies at 4.7 out of 5, so approximately 94%. In a nutshell, turning the competition online enabled us to source wider, provide better opportunities, more targeted opportunities, and it also enabled um, us to provide the entrepreneurs with access to more content and most importantly, to a wider pool of mentors, not only at the local level, not only at the regional level, but also at the global level. All of these um, with the hope, of course, to enable startups to raise investments. Of course, it's still a bit early to talk about the fundraising results as um, capital raised from the batch will only be measured in six months. Um, fundraising doesn't happen like that but we already more, made more than 400 reach outs on a mission to connect entrepreneurs with international investors. So now I'd like to open the floor to the finals. Thank you so much for the great insights, Francesca. And now it's time to move on to the startup pitches. Our jury members for today will be Nashwa Habib, the Gender and Youth Lead of Finbi, Mohamed Zibian, the Program Manager of QSTP, Hossam Audi, Founder of Afkar Incubator, Ilyas Bustani, an Independent Senior Strategy Consultant, and Francesca Bumbasi, the Regional Partnership Manager of Seedstars. My 
name is Rasha and I'm from uh, Trivi LLC. Today I'll be presenting to you a solution basically that is tackling mostly what we call the silent killer, not so silent anymore uh, because of the prevalence of it. So today we are uh, kind of highlighting a solution for chronic conditions that uh, are affecting our uh, area, whether it's the GCC or the MENA in uh, an alarming uh, rate. So who are we targeting? Basically we are targeting about 100 million uh, people in MENA region living with at least one chronic condition. We are targeting one in 3.5 who are suffering with at least uh, the one chronic condition of the ones that we're targeting and definitely with all the costs that comes along with it. So uh, whether it's individuals, government, employers, uh, insurance companies, all will be our clients benefiting from the solution in order to uh, maximize their outcomes. Moving a little bit about the challenges that we overcome, it's really the accessibility of this care and access, the monitoring of virtually uh, continuously, the cost, definitely the scalability and the outcomes. Uh, what am I presenting to you? Basically, it's a Druvi Health Technology, which is an application, a mobile application that is available in Arabic and English, targeting chronic conditions, uh, especially starting with diabetes and hypertension. So basically, through the data science, the technology, we offer a, a new kind of personalized experience for those living with chronic conditions all uh, kind of based on um, the artificial intelligence, the behavior change model, we can empower people to manage their chronic conditions and, um, and get to the outcomes. So we do offer basically a, a, an educator portal, a health coach access, uh, an app, uh, integrated uh, uh, devices, and definitely the educational piece. Um, we rely mostly on our clinical trials, which kind of makes us stand compared to everyone else who's around us. And why Druby? Basically because we are the first movers uh, in the Arab speaking market, uh, because um, that market segment is expected to grow significantly, especially with the high prevalence and the prediction of even a higher prevalence in the coming years, especially of diabetes and, and hypertension. Uh, the clinical trials, we are leading several clinical trials to validate this condition or this, this solution versus just any other tracking app or tracking solution. Definitely the strong cash generating uh, capability and the experienced leadership uh, that we have whether it's for efficiency, profitability, profitability and uh, the professionalism of our uh, team. So this is kind of in three minutes, I know my time is up, but that's all I had to show you. Just a quick question, what's your, uh, you're launched, right? You have, I saw in your pitch that you had yes. some clients, right? Yes, exactly. So uh, basically, we have been launched since May 2019. Right now in Qatar, uh, our main clients are a primary healthcare corporation, PHCC, Hamad Al Ahli Hospital, QD. Did you go beyond, uh, beyond Qatar or not yet? Uh, yes, we're actually in Kuwait in the Sman Diabetes Institute, and now we're uh, looking into UAE. What's, what's, how, how big is your revenue monthly? Uh, so basically, uh, right now, yeah, you know, we are uh, at a point where our revenue is about uh, fifty thousand uh, some. Just keep 50, in mind. Fifty thousand what? Uh, dollars. Dollars per month. Yes. So uh, this is just uh, in the last few months, and we are expanding. Uh, What's um, your? Uh, okay, and um, where will you be next in February next year? What what will number? What your number will be? February next year 2022 so yeah. uh, yes so basically the plan is to expand to mina and uh, right now we had started kind of within qatar uh, gcc and definitely the plan we don't have a lot of time just give me the number sorry a number of the number well, your number now is 50k usd right yes in february 2022 what will be that number I don't have a number to share with you now. I can send. Okay, it to you don't you. have projection yet. Okay. Uh, no, uh, what's your what's what's your monthly cash burn? Uh, right now it's about 200. 200, 200? Qatar Riyadh, uh, sixteen thousand uh, dollars roughly. Sixteen, sixty. Sixteen, yes. Sixteen, one six. Six, six zero. Okay, so you're losing 10 k per month. Okay. Yes. yes. Good, good. It's awesome. Uh, it's really awesome for 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 project like that. Congrats. Yes. Thank you.
who would like to go ahead next? You briefly mentioned a projection of growth in the MENA region. What are the big markets you're planning to tackle next? Okay, yes, uh, this is a great question. So actually, our main goal was to start with GCC, then after that, move to MENA. And definitely, we have a plan to get to Pakistan, Iran, and the other big markets also with uh, a big uh, or high prevalence of diabetes. So we know that this definitely will be our next step. And we already started a little bit exploring Pakistan as well. It's a huge market for those living with diabetes and chronic conditions. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, uh, localization, so you said that one of your main competitive advantage is that uh, you can adapt to local cultures, etc. Can you give us examples and how, how like an international player uh, might not be able to uh, uh, mm -hmm. as well the local markets? Yes, absolutely. So this is a great question. Basically, what we have done is in our application, we have the tracking tools, um, like a small example, for example, the, the blood sugar logging. So we do have something more specific for iftar, for suhoor, uh, the, the diabetes education uh, uh, curriculum that is more based on the American Diabetes Association. We have something that's more tailored to the population here. So something that, that's more adapted to Ramadan, to fasting, to the Arabic culture, the types of food, the food library that we have basically reflects the foods that are consumed here in this area of the world. So all these small things kind of are added together in order to show the localization of the application. And that was uh, that is the reason that attracted uh, pharmaceutical companies like LifeScan, like Roche, to contact us and want to adopt us in here, although they do have their own, right, they, their own application. So that was one of the main reasons why they kind of contacted us in order to go with us through this market here. Another question is on uh, uh, using uh, uh, like uh, all this data, you, you have to enter it manually on the app, right? Like I tested the app, it cannot automatically sync with, with the scale that you have and stuff like this, right? We do actually, we do. We have a plan to, to integrate a lot. Right now, we do have integrated Fitbit, uh, Withings uh, uh, Scale, Smart Scale, uh, LifeScan uh, Glucometer, Roche Glucometers. Uh, we do have uh, Google Fit, Apple Health, like all these different ones are already integrated. And we do have a long list. So every month we're working on new gadgets to integrate with the plan that everything will be mostly automatically uh, captured to kind of lessen the work on the clients to add to things manually. We are Maruna. Um, globally, 90% of sewage is not currently processed. And of the remaining 10%, most treatment options are vastly expensive and inefficient. We are Ziad and Ben from Maruna, and we are here to present BioMweb. BioMweb is a decentralized wastewater solution that harnesses the power of nature and a suite of internet connected devices to revolutionize access to sanitation services and recycled water. By leveraging newly accessible digital technologies, the system is cheaper, more easily managed, and more environmentally sustainable than major infrastructure development or sewage truck services. As the world's population explodes, new cities are being built and old cities are expanding. Wastewater continues to increase. Old style centralized sewage infrastructure, however, just isn't up to the challenge of providing low cost, rapidly deployable solutions. Even if you can afford to put traditional pipes and treatment stations, which most countries can't, as we've seen in Lebanon, doing in areas that have already urbanized is almost impossible. And when you start from scratch, sewage infrastructure is either too slow to keep up with the building rate or it's too expensive to connect areas that aren't yet high enough density. Either way, you almost always end up with sewage trucks. BioMweb is the solution. Our design philosophy is there's no waste in nature. Our pilot systems in Abu Dhabi, in Lebanon, in the Beka, and for the UN replace mechanical systems, major infrastructure, and sewage trucks with a perpetual bouquet of papyrus and sugar cane. Our individual design biome pubs, which can be networked together to service larger clients or communities, consist of an elegant series of water tanks that imitate aquatic habitats to process sewage and produce clean water for irrigation. The addition of IoT in a secure app-based management system gives BioMweb an easy, straightforward way to manage and monitor our assets and make them practically autonomous from a single system to a country-wide network. The addition of IoT in a secure app-based 
uh, system allows us to create cost savings on in-person monitoring and our rapid response enables our IoT to be competitive at a price point and offer a level of reliability that traditional solutions cannot provide. And these technical innovations enable our flexible business model where clients can customize to their needs, be that a hardware purchase, support services and monitoring, or a paper use prescription. With PPP partnerships with governments and donors, this also allows for quick scalability, leveraging SME distribution channels and engaging with communities that are economically underprivileged who need it most. This in turn allows us to most effectively service our key three customer groups, the private sector, the public sector and crisis response. Working together as an international team of biologists, engineers, urban planners and international development strategists, we are addressing a market that is only continuing to grow. 170 new sustainable cities are being built and we want to be part of these. 76 million forcibly displaced people currently live in refugee camps and millions more in informal settlements and we want to help them. Water is becoming increasingly precious. From palace to refugee camp to suburb, BioWeb can be cheaply, quickly and reliably implemented to allow for a new era of digitally enabled wastewater treatment. Thank you so much and we're, we're here to answer any questions. Questions. Thank you. Very interesting presentation. Uh, in terms of revenue, so the 250,000, where are they coming from? How many clients and what type and who funded them? Sure. So we um, currently have a mix of private sector clients and uh, public sector clients. So we currently have uh, three systems running in Lebanon, uh, two which are funded by the UN, um, and they are in informal settlements in the Bekaa. Um, we have one system which is installed in the Lebanese Agricultural Research Institute. Um, we recently just uh, closed up a system for uh, a major developer in Abu Dhabi, um, which was supporting a workers and construction site for an environmental project. Um, and we're in the process of, of deploying um, another system which will either um, be installed for the government of Sharjah um, or will be installed for a, a major developer um, in Abu Dhabi. So at the moment, um, if you, you kind of want to break down, you know, how we're tackling the market, um, I can actually just bring up another slide here um, on, uh, on kind of go to market, this kind of, kind of, targets kind of where we're tackling. So first of all, um, we, we kind of are working in, in three markets with our current clients looking how we grow. So the work we're doing with UNICEF is very much um, at a point where we're looking to scale up across Lebanon um, for the crisis sector. And so we're in the, the final processes of identifying which technology UNICEF is gonna, gonna pick to scale up across informal settlements and refugee camps in Lebanon. Secondly, we work very closely with the, with the Lebanese government and kind of key water and, and sanitation stakeholders in the country. Um, so we're working on being one of the key solutions for peri-urban municipalities um, in the north and, and various other places. Um, when it comes to the, the private sector, um, we have a key need term target of, of working really to disrupt the sewage truck market in, in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Um, so that's a very kind of tangible, quantifiable market which which we're um, which we're aiming to tackle um, but as that as that grows we we're looking to expand in the GCC um, we have various other different kind of lines we're developing within the GCC but also in, in other parts of the world okay thank you and ask a question about the GCC sure I, d I live here, I live in the GCC, but I don't know too much about wastewater ma management, but uh, I do know delivery trucks um, and, and sewage trucks. What do they do with the sewage? They dump it in the desert or do they do have processing plants to process it? So it depends on the country, um, but uh, let's take the UAE as a good, as a good example. Um, so those sewage trucks are taking it to central treatment facilities. So the, the challenge there is, is kind of twofold. Um, in, in the Emirates. One is um, you're, you're paying for those polluting sewage trucks to come and empty that from your house or your hotel or, or your facility, which then takes it to, to its centralized treatment. Dubai has just put in a sewage system which costs 9 billion um, and it only covers a fraction of the city. 
Um, so everything that's in terms of the expansion of Dubai um, or Riyadh, Dubai, um, whichever city you like is, is growing quickly, um, most of those are not going to have sewage infrastructure in the near term. So they're going to be relying on those sewage trucks. Now, the key challenge specifically in the Gulf market, which is an opportunity for us, is the high cost of water. So when you're looking at a, at a business model for us in the GCC, um, it's not only the cost of being competitive against wastewater, but it's the cost of what you have to buy water into your house or facility to fill your pool, irrigate your lawns or, or carry out agriculture. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we'll talk about online sellers and how complicated their supply chain management could be. They need to deal with multiple parties, manage many orders, deal with inventory, complex international regulation, the list goes on and on. You may ask, how do we know that? Well, basically, I was personally involved in a global e-commerce virtual in the past. We used to find, vet, and supervise our own logistic partners. It was tough time-consuming and costly, but it was also fun with the right company. The good news is there is a solution. So let's put it this way. If you are an online seller, you are selling in one or many sales channels. You may need one or many shipping partners. You may need one or many warehousing partners, freight forwarder, custom clearance agent, and a bunch of other services. These services exist today on the market, but they are extremely fragmented. So you may go deep reach to those different partners to concatenate your own solution, or you can work with Fulfillment Bridge, one-stop shop that handles the whole supply chain on your behalf. This comes handy also for our logistic partners because while acting as consolidator, we help them to remove the burden of acquiring and managing multiple online sellers. This couldn't happen without our proprietary technology that allowed us to build and grow our global network of partners, to which we added a layer of AI that helps us to monetize and uh, leverage the data that exists in our network. By adopting a hybrid revenue uh, business model, we managed to quadruple our revenue year over year, and we acquired over 50 customers in 15 countries in 2020 only. And in terms of business opportunity, while our solution and our scope is global, our focus is Middle East and Africa, simply because while looking at the growth of e-commerce penetration in the region, it is three times faster than the rest of the world, especially post-pandemic. Uh, you may ask, what is our secret sauce? Well, as I say, at Fulfillment Bridge, we are providing end-to-end -end solution that cover the whole fulfillment value chain. And we are managing all the partners uh, involved in this uh, value chain on behalf of the customer. Finally, this couldn't be achieved without a young yet experienced team that reflects Fulfillment Bridge DNA, which is a combination of deep knowledge of technology, e-commerce, and logistics. Thank you for your time. Over to you for questions. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't understand what is your uh, main uh, pain point Okay. The most and the, and the so most challenging part of your business. Pain point that we are trying to address, or our pain point as fulfillment bridge. Mm -hmm. And and on what is the most challenging part of your business? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Basically, let's put it this way: we are an extremely asset light company. While today we are available in 14 countries with a network of 24 warehouses and a list of over 46 partners. Basically, we are extremely asset light. We don't own those warehouses. We don't own the logistic fleet and so on. So basically, the main challenge at Fulfillment Bridge is basically uh, identifying, acquiring, uh, vetting, and monitoring the partners to make sure that they keep up with their SLAs and to make sure that uh, we keep up with our SLAs with the clients. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, question: So you're in you're in 15 countries, 15 or 16, I think it was 15. Uh, but you decided to focus on Mina. 
why did you focus on MINA and why don't you let the market decide where you should focus? Again, extremely good question. Uh, well, basically, uh, it's, it's not uh, just for because we are from this region that we wanted to, to go back to our roots. Uh, basically, it's a, a market study that we perform it uh, and that shows uh, that, first of all, as I said, the, uh, the e-commerce penetration in, in the MENA region, especially and Africa, is, uh, is growing three times faster than the rest of the world. So while we are talking about 10% e-commerce penetration uh, globally, we are at around 27% in, in MENA. Secondly, is uh, basically the maturity of the market. So why, for example, if you look at US, Europe, China, those mature e-commerce markets, you may find like the top two players, they are monopolizing and uh, running 60%, over 60% the, uh, than the market share. So they are dictating uh, uh, the, the standard and the, uh, uh, the rules and uh, how things are done in terms of e-commerce. While when you look at MENA, basically the top two, even in the relatively mature market like the UAE and Saudi Arabia, they are having less than 20%. So it's an extremely fragmented market where small to medium player that are mushrooming uh, over day over day, basically they are lacking this kind of solutions. Thank you. I have a question on uh, your uh, market segment. So uh, what, what, what is your customer segment? So are you looking after uh, uh, companies that are offline that want to go online using their own platform and this is uh, where you have an offering for them or are you pursuing uh, the marketplaces that are uh, uh, small, a small marketplace in the region? What, are, what how, how are you acquiring customers and who are you focusing on? All right. So today we have three profiles in our portfolio. The first one, an online seller that is already have already digital presence. So he's selling on one or many online sales channels through her own website or through a marketplace. Okay. We, don't, we are not in the uh, in the process yet of helping traditional retailer to move to the digital world. So we, we get in only at the time when you have your own digital uh, presence and you are struggling with how to expand or how to do your logistics. This is the first profile. The second profile is marketplaces. While, for example, Amazon, they got the marketplace where basically they do the product uh, uh, listing, but also they got the logistic behind. Not like when you look at the uh, diaspora of marketplaces, a lot of the other marketplaces don't have this uh, armada of logistic solution on the back to support their uh, uh, their retail uh, operation. So that's the second profile that we are working on. The third profile that we have are pure logistic players that want to get into the e-commerce fulfillment, e-commerce logistics. Because when you are a traditional 3PL, you are not necessarily able to keep up with the requirement of uh, e-commerce need. So that's where we have a solution that we can deploy in a warehouse to be able to, to transform it into a fulfillment center, an e-commerce fulfillment center. Perfect. Your time, and, is uh, uh, you. time is up. Maybe there is one question about uh, client acquisition. So basically, it's a uh, it's a mixture of uh, uh, digital marketing. So we have strong digital marketing and uh, a PPC machine uh, that is working already and generating over two hundred uh, leads a month. Plus, we have a, a direct to customer approach where we are growing our uh, sales network, especially in the region, and we are uh, adopting direct approach to clients. I am Hysen Berwish, founder of Limawen. I am also a civil engineer with 15 years experience in construction field. Uh, construction field in Egypt, one of the most uh, important sector in Egyptian economy, was a $25 billion investment in building at uh, 2020 and 9% annual growth rate. Um, despite the huge market size, there is a lot of operational and logistical uh, problems in construction field in Egypt. Uh, one of the top problems is casting concrete uh, on site. Uh, our market uh, has a lot of uh, prob problems. Um, contractor and vendors uh, have a lot of problems like delaying uh, casting day due to vendor schedule. Uh, price fluctuation, uh, suffering from uh, prolonged uh, casting time timings, 
and quality problems. Uh, here comes El Mawan. El Mawan uh, as a changing factor in ready mixed concrete industry. Mawan is the first interactive platform specialized in booking and ordering uh, and delivering ready mixed concrete. Uh, using our application, the contractor can assign his project location and he can uh, order uh, uh, the quantity of, conc uh, of concrete with his own specification uh, and he can select uh, his uh, favorite uh, vendor uh, from our vendor list, uh, knowing the price, the distance uh, from the station and the site and how many trucks the vendor uh, has. Uh, during the casting process, he can track all the transportation process, uh, the trucks from the station to the site, and uh, when he will uh, finish his uh, process. Uh, as we can see, uh, our solution has a lot of adv advantage, like reduce 10% of concrete work time schedule, transparency for all parties, optimization, and cost efficiency. Uh, our business model, we, we take 5 to 7% from every transaction. In 16 months uh, of operation, we uh, succeed to achieve $1.7 million uh, revenue, uh, 100,000 uh, gross profit. And uh, last six months, we uh, gain $5,000 monthly net profit. Uh, our uh, turnover as 10 times uh, annually turnover, capital turnover. Um, now we are serving uh, more than 600 uh, contractors uh, by uh, 58 uh, station. We cover six areas, uh, six cities in Egypt. Uh, our on, ongoing project uh, 14, and this is the number ordered uh, of concrete and uh, cement from our platform. Uh, we ask for $500,000 to gain uh, next year uh, uh, total revenue uh, $8 million, uh, gross profit $500,000, and uh, attract 6,000 uh, 6, uh, annual application download. And we will offer nine products uh, uh, beside uh, concrete and uh, we will expand our operation for uh, 10, uh, 10 areas. Thank you. Or up to now, what is it? Uh, six, uh, 16 months of operation. We started operation in September uh, uh, 2019 okay. uh, and uh, that is 16 months. So 1.7 million in revenue and 100,000 in profit. Okay, why, why, why are the profits, uh, I wanna say it nicely, why are the profits so low compared to your revenues? Where's the money going? Okay, there is, there is gross profit. Our margin in, 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 in every transaction from five to seven from uh, the transaction. Uh, okay, so the, the 1.7 million in revenue represents the five to seven percent or something different? 5.17. Okay, so where's the one point uh, from the 1.7 million dollars you generate in revenue from your five to seven percent fee? Why are you only left with one hundred thousand dollars in profit? Where's the rest of the money going? Like, wh where are your costs? Why are your costs okay. so high? Okay, uh, the, the, the um, costs we have uh, about uh, uh, ninety-seven uh, percentage of costs. We buy we, we, we buy the concrete and uh, uh, buy the uh, give give the vendors. Uh, about 97% of our sales, and uh, we take margin about five to five to seven percent of uh, of uh, of the sale. Okay. Uh, I, I, I would like to mention that commodities uh, is uh, and B two B B two B products uh, it's different uh, 
from B two C and uh, another products. Definitely, yes. Hey, uh, thank you for the presentation. I saw you have a um, relationship to Sawari building, uh, Sawari construction. What's what's that relationship? Sawari. Yeah, Sawaris. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, Sawaris. Uh, we, we have uh, we we have uh, our lead investor in in our platform as uh, Gemini Enterprise Africa, uh, one of uh, Sawaris uh, group. On investing in startups. Now, the presentation says owned by a company, something, some African company, SARL, and then Sawaris Construction. Uh, Oraskum or Construction. Is, is there is or, or ask, yeah, or ask, uh, Construction, yeah. So they own your company or they are just investor? They, they are our partners in, in, in our company. They are investors. So the presentation say they owned by. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just find the right wording. Sorry, I'm, I'm going back to the skills. Mm -hmm. El Mawan is owned by Gemini Enterprise Africa, SARL, and Oraskam Construction Industries. Ah, there, there's our lead investors. No, no, any. What this, they... this is your word. Okay, lead oh, investor. What do you mean? How much did they invest? Uh, to, uh, they invested. Um, Two million EGB uh, from uh, from the beginning of our uh, operation. What's they have, that in dollars? They have. What's, what's uh, that in dollars? Um, okay. It's five hundred k, I think, more or less. Uh, 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 more one uh, more one hundred and twenty five. 125k US dollar. dollar. Uh, they uh, they, okay. they have twenty five percent of our uh, company. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being dedicated to the Seed Stars World competition from the beginning till the end. And now the winner uh, of the MENA chapter that will go on and represent the MENA region at the grand finale is Fulfillment Bridge. Thank you, thank you guys. I'm sorry again for the uh, technical awesome. issues I'm facing on my side. I really appreciate it. Well, I, can, I couldn't be more proud, first, to represent Tunisia and also to, 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 to win among uh, the, the champion startups that made it to the stage. So, uh, first of all, hard luck to, to all the startups that uh, made it uh, that far. Uh, I know it's been uh, quite tough. Uh, we couldn't be more proud. So uh, thank you again, guys, for recognizing this.